What's going on everybody? Welcome to another WIM tutorial. Uh, in this video I am going to talk about uh, my own macros and I've actually changed them. So far I've been learning uh, new languages like JavaScript, HTML, CSS and uh, Golang. Uh, therefore, uh, normally I've assigned each unique build macro to a key. So for example, actually let me just show you. So these are my previous macros. So as you can see, I will explain all of them later. Just uh, let me show it to you now. So as you can see, for example, I've binded Java to at J. Uh, I've binded uh, Python to at P. And uh, let's just skip this. This is uh, assembly and this is for running Java projects. So at N uh, runs JavaScript. So node. At C runs C++, etc. However, I was kind of confused because there are a lots of keys. I couldn't remember all of them and therefore I need to, to make a change. So the change is actually going like this. I've binded a one macro to all of the programs. So if I want to run Python, Java, C++, C, etc. any file, I just hit at G. So let me show it to you actually. So this is a C++ file. If I hit at G now, it will automatically run the C++ file. So let's create a, let's create some files first. So uh, a.py for Python, uh, a.js for JavaScript, what else? So a.go for Golang and a.c for C. And let's create a Java file too actually. All right, cool. So as you can see, I've created new files here. So let's just type C's first. It's not studio. All right, so main. So printf. Uh, this is a C file. Uh, I'm sorry. I should have done this before. So package main for go func main. And let's write just print then. Um, uh, this is goal length. All right, so cool. So for Java, oh, it will be long actually. So class A, uh, public, public static void main, uh, string arcs for Java, and let's just write system out, uh, print in hello. Uh, this is Java. So last one, I think. Let's just write console.log. Hello, this is JavaScript. And as for Python, let's just write print. This is Python. So, all right, so I think we are good to go now. So, now I'm in my Python file. If I hit edg, it will automatically run my Python file. Now I'm on the JavaScript one. If I hit edg, uh, I think. Maybe I don't have uh, JavaScript in this computer, so let's go to Java. I hit a G again. Hello, this is Java. So let's continue. In a.go, I hit a G again. This is Golang. So in C, this is a C file. And in C++, this is a C++ file. So how does all of this work? Uh, it's actually pretty simple. Let me show it to you now. Uh, also, it supports HTML too. It will automatically open HTML in a new browser. So actually, I think I can show it to you if you want. So let's say that there is a simple HTML file here and it just writes hello, nothing more. Oops, why doesn't it work? Ah, all right, cool. So it worked too. As you can see, it automatically opened up a new browser page and it's rendered that HTML file. So how did I did all of this and now I'll explain all of the macros. So five in config and I think macros. So all right, cool. Uh, as you can see, the top ones are so line two to line eight were my previous macros. And as you can see, there are uh, lots of different key bytes here. So J, K, P, A, N, C, G. I couldn't remember all of them. Therefore, I thought that uh, if I use the Vim's built-in auto command, so auto command on buff enter, this buff enter means that whenever any buffer is focused, so you can think of it as like the current file, and I've just catched the 
file ending. So dot Java for Java, dot Py for Python, dot uh, ASM for assembly, dot C plus plus, dot C dot code, dot JS, dot HTML. So on, so on and so forth. So if you are writing a different language, or I don't know, like Rust, you are going to need to write star dot uh, RS, I think. You can just configure all of them by yourself after I explain how all of these macros work. So uh, let's try with the basic ones first. So as for Java, uh, if you just uh, hit Java source file, if you just want to run a single Java file, the Java command will do the work for you. So as you can see here, I've binded at g2 w then a backslash cr. This cr means control, by the way, which is enter carriage return. I'm sorry. And after writing the current file, I'm opening a new vertical split window. This VSP means a vertical split. And after that, I've piped it with Neowim's built-in terminal. And I am commanding Java to run current file. Uh, in Vim, current file is assigned to percentage, by the way. And if you are wondering what this I is, this I means that when a new split terminal opened, automatically put me in insert mode. Don't start it in normal mode. As for Python, it's pretty simple, and actually it's the same as Java, so run current Python file, same as Java. I'm not explaining that. Uh, I am omitting assembly because no one is actually caring about assembly now. Uh, as for C++, so C++ is different, and C, actually compiled languages are different. So as for compiled languages, before you can start your code, before you can start your program, you need to compile it first. And after you compile it, uh, you obtain a new binary file and you need to execute that binary file. So as for C++, it's pretty simple. Uh, I am writing the current file again. Uh, after writing, I am compiling it with G++. So this uh, exclamation mark, uh, this bank, means that I am going to give a shell command now to Vim. So shell command, uh, I am compiling this current file again. So in default, C++ and C uh, defines output to a.out. out. You can change the output name, but I am just using defaults here. So if you want, you can just change it. After compile operation, I am opening up a new split terminal again, and I am running the binary file. So it's a.out out in Linux. Uh, as for C, it's pretty much the same. Uh, just I've changed the compiler now, so G++ for C++ compiling and GCC for C compiling. Uh, everything else is the same. So I'm writing the current file now, and after writing, I am using uh, GCC to compile it, and after that, I'm running the binary file. All right, cool. Uh, as for Golang, uh, actually you don't need to compile Golang. Uh, if you write go run and file name, it will automatically run. So this is basically the same as Python and Java. So it writes the current file and it just runs that current go file you are on. Uh, as for JavaScript, it's the same terminal run node uh, like JavaScript. Uh, I'm sorry, Java or Python. And as for HTML, it's pretty much simple. So I'm right silent here and after that I'm giving up a shell command and open this current file on my Chromium browser. So just change whatever browser you are currently in. So actually this is it. Uh, however, you can't run projects like this. This uh, macros just work on single files. So for example, if you want to run a Go package that consists of uh, multiple Go files and all of them are linked to each other, you need to run all of the Go files. So uh, just a simple example. So as you can see, in line 9, it says that at H to run Go, it sets my project root. This project root means that uh, set my directory to wherever the go.mod file is. After that, uh, write the current file again and open up a split terminal. Now, not the current file, but run all Go files. So if you just write star.go, uh, it will automatically catch uh, recursively all of your Go files in your current project. Uh, actually, this is it, guys. So I wanted to cut it short. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in comments. Uh, also, you can take my dot files or you can just take these uh, AO groups. Uh, also, if you are using Vim script and not Lua, just omit this vim.cmd and the square brackets. And if you want, you 
don't need to set them in a group actually, just copy these auto commands in your Vim script and it will automatically run uh, any programming language that's currently in here. Uh, if you want to add new programming languages, just take a sneak peek uh, of this different uh, macros. Most of them are pretty similar. So for, as for compiled languages, you need to follow the C pattern. If a Tamil CLI application just runs your current file, just uh, go on and check this Java pattern. So uh, this is actually it, guys. Uh, if you want to ask any questions, feel free to ask in comments. And if you want to, if you want me to shoot any Vim tutorials, ask them in comments too. Uh, I will try to teach you as much as I can. So see you guys in the next video. Take care, guys.